Welcome to the second instalment in this video tutorial series. If you've not seen episode one, quick recap, we looked at long rod, light line, dead drift techniques. Yes. Featuring all the line off the water. Now these would be familiar to a whole host of anglers, wouldn't they? I'm going to say historical wet fly fishers, modern competition anglers, you know, everybody in between. It's, yeah. it, it, it is that line off, dead drift yeah. presentation. Yeah, yeah. In this video, we're going to be seeing how you can apply the advantages of line off the water, long rod light line techniques to add some movement to your fly and really, really up your catch rate. Yeah, it's that next level stuff. John smashes it out of the park with this demo and stream, so let's check that out now. So you're watching me, John, on stream now. I've been fishing for a few minutes up to this point, mostly with a dead drift presentation and not had a great deal of success. So I've decided to try manipulation. Before we get into the details of manipulation, let's have a quick look at the setup and the anatomy of this pool. Just like in the last episode, we can see I'm fishing that classic style of high rod or the line off the water to the fly. This allows me to avoid catching line in the current nearest to me, but not only that, I'm able to fish across the far side of the far current also. If we quickly rewind that and watch again, there's something else you may have missed. On the far side of the current seam, there are actually some opposing currents. In many situations, I would favour a stiff hackled wet fly with opposing currents because the stiff hackles enable you to lock in those currents. But when manipulating, a soft reverse hackle can actually give you a little bit of the anchoring property, but a lot of extra movement. Another thing to keep in mind when manipulating, particularly with a soft hackled fly, is the amount of slack that you allow to drop into the manipulation. We can take a look at that now. Everyone knows that manipulation involves pulsing the fly by gently pulling on it. The pull of each pulse results in the line pulling straight. But the real key to this technique is to drop the rod tip slightly between each pulse allowing slack into the line. You'll know you're doing it right when you see this nice wave in the line. This slack plays two important parts in manipulation. Firstly, it allows soft hackles time to open out again. And second, it leaves some slack in the system for a taking fish, resulting in more hookups like this. He's not very big, but he's really got his head down in that current. He got in amongst some weed as well. Nice. Okay. They're not the biggest fish, but he was a fighter. Look at that. Fantastic. Nice work on stream there, John. Thanks very much. He got demo. his head down in the weed a little bit, so he <laughs> made things difficult. But uh, yeah, it may or may not have occurred to some people as they were watching that, but I was fishing there without a reel. Step back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I thought this was a fly fishing video. I'm, uh, yeah. You know, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is if you watched it on its own merit, I would defy anyone who's a fan of fly fishing to have a problem with what they saw in that video. Presenting a fly with an elegant cast, uh, a beautiful, delicate, unweighted fly. Yeah, it's a proper casting yeah. loop, apart from anything else. Land in a likely looking spot and takes a trout, a feeding trout, a wild trout in some of the most beautiful scenery that uh, the you know the United Kingdom's got to offer. Yeah, I, th I think you know you you. People will or won't argue with that, but here's the thing. I think those folks who immediately rule it out because the T word was involved, you know, the rod without a reel, those folks are going to be missing out on a massive amount of, you know, just a whole suite of techniques that yeah. can transform your day and give you just yeah. like an amazing experience on stream. Yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, it's definitely worth, I think, dissecting a little bit what actually went on in that clip. Yeah, yeah. we can take a look sort of step by step of the mechanics of that. And it could be applied on, on the tackle we used in video one. 
we should, I mean, that's the reason yeah. we did that. Yeah. This is not dependent on the kind of rod and reel that you're using. Mm -hmm. This is about the marrying that perfect, simple pattern to its dream function. So if we look first, we had some manipulation of the fly. Mm. There are certain things with certain pieces of tackle that prevent you from actually being able to do that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. what we need is we need a light line. Mm. So obviously in Tenkara we've got that straight away. Yeah. If you're a Western fly fisher, a number four line to, you know, straight through to a little bit of tippet is not going to get you there. You're looking at things like French leaders. Mm. Some of the micro thin lines, they're, they're not as good as a French leader, but they're they're a lot better than a heavy four you weight line. You could use it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you could just use a very long leader. You know, you can get a twelve foot tapered leader. Give that a go. Um, I would say for me, if if I'm not using ten carat tackle, then French leader is the way to go. It's <laughs> it's the one of the most successful uh, comp methods 100%. there's ever been. I mean, you could, you know, you get daft. I mean, we sort of mess about with all sorts of things. You could even use an old-fashioned horsehair line yeah. because that's light enough and it's got the casting weight. Yeah, um, we've we've witnessed that by modern practitioners of, mm. of Tankara who yeah, yeah. are traditionalists in the same way that you'd find a guy fishing a, a split cane rod and a silk line. Mm -hmm. In Japan, there are devotees of horsehair lines uh, yeah. in that same way. But they are tremendously effective. They give you advantages that... Some people who are fishing, you know, tried and tested four weight line on an eight foot rod, you're missing out on the ability to do certain things. Yeah, and that's uh, and those techniques have been around in fly fishing far far longer than lines that lay yeah, on the eight foot rods and four weight lines. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So let's drill down. In your demo, one of the things, one of the key things, I really wanted to pick up on not only the movement, the pulsation that that you were giving, but the idea that it's it's as much about what you, how you control the line between each pulsation mm. it's not just the pull it's how you feed slack down the line in between each pull and the fact that you know actually more than half the time the fish will grab it on the pause yeah. not on the pull yeah. you'll feel it when you come when yeah. you actually make that next pulsation that's a, that's another important thing to know you're looking for a rhythmic pulse that the fish can all, almost time in on if you just yeah. shake things erratically uh you will get slashes at your fly it yeah. may attract yeah. fish but you, your number of hookups is vastly reduced but a, a, a definite rhythm where you know you can sort of predictable. see yeah predictable the fish are very good at keying in and timing in on that rhythm mm -hmm. and hitting the fly on the paws another little micro observation from me that'll really up your catch rate when you do feel that you know if the fish is taken on the paws and you feel it don't just start playing the fish at that point yeah. i mean you tell this you know That's time it. and time it's again so common um you know I, I see it in so many people when i'm when i'm out coaching on stream there's no strike because the fish has got the fly in its mouth. Mm. But so many times that hook is not actually set. The fish is just holding the fly in its mouth. And yeah. the minute it decides it's too much like hard work, it opens its mouth and lets go. It's gone. And you lose the fish. And we see this uh, a lot when, we're, when we've watched Japanese masters mm. fishing uh, Tenkara methods with manipulation. You will see this sort of pulse, 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 pulse. Then they'll get a fish and there'll be that. So, oh, that's a fish. And you'll see like, a second, second strike, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so like a, a double a, hook, a very set de almost. definite yeah, second yeah, strike. Yeah. And if you are practicing this technique, whether on it on a Western rod with a French leader, whether on a ten carry rod, the second strike is an absolute necessity mm. if you want to land that fish. There are so many times where you'll you'll feel a fish. It's almost like uh, if if you fish lures, you know, you get people that do yeah. a strip yeah, yeah, strike yeah, yeah, yeah. as well as a strike because that jangle on the other end is by no means. The, the hook, hook up. Actually, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. just the fish taken. You still need to do something yeah. to convert that into an actual capture. So let's let's rein it back in again. We've we've had that nice nice look at the things that you can take and you can start using them on stream right away in that lesson. Awesome job, by the way, on stream. That's really really good stuff. Um, but for me, this is going back to the first video as well. We talked about that journey where we came. We actually got to arrive at a place where we'd thrown out a lot of the things that weren't mm. really helping us in our river fly fishing. And whether that was wet fly fishing or, you know, just the traditional methods uh, that, that people recognise with rod and reel, or the kind of the, this new fangled tenkara fishing, which is centuries old, but we'll we'll gloss over that. 
all of those had, you know, some common uh, mechanics that are in there. And my, and my sort of challenge to people is that, you know, if you think that there's nothing to offer from these simple truths about how that fish actually came to take John's fly in that demonstration, I think you're massively closing off a huge amount of sort of opportunities to, to how this all yeah, works. Yeah. And a big, for me, and I'm going to speak for you, so correct me if I'm wrong, but a big epiphany for me came about when I realized that all the best flies that I was using in Western and competition angling were impressionistic. They were not close copy flies. Mm. So a massive, massive revelation for me was the idea that close copy flies, if the, if the copy is too good to our eyes, that it actually reduces your catch rate. That Definitely. was the killer thing for me, that the, you know, making those super, super close copy flies actually can make your results worse. If <laughs> you look at the flies from, you know, from something as historic as the Complete Angler mm. or, you know, the numerous books there are on North Country wet flies. Yeah. Um, if you look into other cultures at flies from Tenkara, uh, you've got the flies from Valsesiana. Mm. Um, all of them have got these common features, which is the body is longer than it is fat mm. and it's got sticky out bits. <laughs> <laughs> and that is about the the strength of yeah. it in terms of that common thread and most of the flies you'll see are literally that simple yeah and if if you this look at a thing. drowned insect yeah that's the equation if you look at all you know sort of spent spinners any drowned insects any newly emerging insect they're all a bit longer than they are fat and they've got sticky out bits yeah this is the thing i mean if because we've we've had sort of biology backgrounds, we've, we've been able to look a little bit with a slightly different lens than most people get to be, you know, if, you, if you're only introduced to it through the fly fishing literature, a lot of that concentrates on copying very, very closely in the vice, the, mm. the features of the fly. Now, fish and humans will see flies differently. They don't interpret them the same way. So we've had a, just you know, by blind accident, really, we've had a bit of a background that lets us look at some of those differences. Mm. But if fish did need to have photorealistic copies. You know, flies like the clink hammer special, flies like the elk hair and caddis. Mm. I, you know, I could go on and on. Pheasant tail nymph. Pheasant tail nymph, killer bug, right? Mm. Okay, so all of the world's most effective flies, you know, that, that are in that kind of top, to everybody's top 10 most yeah. effective flies. They're all impressionistic. They're not, you know, if you put a clink hammer next to an, an insect, mm. right? we can easily tell the difference given the chance to actually kind of look at it. But fish don't want that or need that, or, or it's not to their advantage to rely on that. They need this kind of gut reaction where they can make a judgment without using tons of brain power mm. because they haven't got a lot of brain power. Yeah, it almost literally is that. We say gut reaction, but we're talking mm. about that sort of limbic brain function, aren't we, where yeah. it is your most primitive part of your brain that, that gives you instinctive reactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fish literally that's all they have they don't have a conscious function where they eliminate features and decide mm. oh that looks better than that but let me make one thing massively clear that doesn't make them easy to catch no it doesn't mean that it's a straightforward thing it just means that you need to know what triggers that are important yeah so they're here's... almost like jobs worths yeah the worst you know, kind of yeah the worst sort of um <laughs> Parking meter attendant, you yeah, know, traffic yeah. warden, writing if, you up for a ticket, yeah, if regardless it of what you say. If saying. it doesn't fit into one of the checkboxes, <laughs> there's no Forget reason. It. And it's the same with a trout sort of, you know, their prey image mm. is almost literally a series of checkboxes. And if you can check enough boxes, you'll trigger a feeding response. Without scaring them, which is, again, we'll come on to that yeah. in the next video. Mm. But yeah, that for me, that's the thing, is understanding how to trigger off that feeding response. Now, here, I'll throw something else out here, which is that in close copy fly patterns, a lot of the time, because you've thrown all, you know, dozens and dozens of different imitative features into that fly, there's a decent chance that it will check enough of those boxes. Mm. But you don't know at what point you could have stopped adding features yeah. to that fly. So I've, you know, one thing that I've sort of thought about a little bit is, you know, if you're painting, you know, the inside of your house, you might put two or three coats on to kind of get the true colour to come through, but you don't put like 500 coats of paint on because at some point it doesn't give you any more benefit, yeah. right? So understanding the point at which you've done enough imitatively, you've done a good enough job with your imitation, and the fish has already accepted it as food. 
then you need to be concentrating on presentation. Mm. And it's, it's understanding when you've got to that point where it's accepted as food. So here's the thing, this is where I'm going to leave this video and we're going to definitely pick up on it in the next um, video lesson coming up soon. If you've got to that point where fish have recognised your fly as food, once you make your copy too good, it then blends in and it actually reduces your effectiveness. So it's then understanding how you ride that balance between recognition and standing out enough to get your fly selected out of the clouds of, mm. of naturals. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that, definitely come in and uh, tune into the next video lesson that's coming up soon. Um, the usual message as well, I'll let you maybe do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> call to, um, call if, to arms. <laughs> if you're one of the people who's, uh, who's sort of newly on this video course and you've not been made aware, we have a series of video tutorials, not video tutorials, email tutorials that feature videos, that yeah, feature that that links videos, through to various articles, uh, that feature some all sorts of special offers. There's a whole host of stuff in there. And it, it, if you sign up, you'll get at least a year's worth of, of regular tutorials mm. featuring the kind of things that you've been looking at in this video really yeah so if you're not signed up sign up now we'll put a link on screen there's probably a little uh, thing you can click on on youtube or if you read the description or if you're on our web page somewhere around there will be a link saying free <laughs> tutorials i would urge you to sign up i don't think we've ever had many people that, are, that have regretted signing up for the free tutorials. no and of course you can unsubscribe at any time so you've, yeah. you've not put any money up yeah. front you've basically it's a free way of finding out whether you like our yeah. stuff or yeah. not and we you don't know, we don't pass on details either so you no. won't suddenly get spammed by a million unrecognizable no, companies we 100%, are it's yeah. just for the email tutorials mm. so uh, you'll be guaranteed some of the best fish intuition straight to your inbox till next time yeah See, See you, you in the next one.